Coming up in the area's music, arts, and entertainment scene, we will interview local artists, authors, and musicians, as well as some nationally recognized names. We will have movie discussions with the real dad, Mark Schumann, and learn etiquette tips from Catherine Michaels. This is your all-access pass, so sit back and enjoy Radio Arts and Leisure with your hosts, Sally Sanders and Steve Coulter. Welcome, I'm your host, Steve Coulter, to uh, HAN Arts and Leisure. I'm joined here with the real dad, Mark Schumann. Yeah, we have lights and yeah, camera we've got and action. <laughs> we've got plenty of, uh, plenty of cameras here. We're finally we on video after a two-week break. We do. We've made the we leap are. from radio to video. And just in time to talk about movies. Movies, and there's plenty movies, to talk movies. about. There, first of all, before we jump into the things that are getting ready to Yeah, what open, have you seen in the last couple weeks that uh, you'd recommend run, to people? Run, don't walk to Bethel to see Grandma, a lovely 79-minute study of great acting starring the wonderful Lily Tomlin. And is she going to get the Oscar nod well, this year? I, I, you never know. You never know. It may be too subtle a movie. It may be too small a movie. But we have seen so many films over the months that try so hard to be so big and do so much. And this is 79 of the most beautifully crafted minutes I've seen in a long time with an actress who doesn't as much perform as she simply lives inside the skin of this lovely, eccentric woman who spends a day revisiting past chapters of her life as she tries to help her granddaughter cope with some difficult decisions. And the movie's got a terrific uh, supporting cast that we talked about the it, last it time. Sam Elliott in right. a, a, a Marisha tremendous Gay Harden is in it as well. And, and Marsha Gay Harden. Yep. But, but Tomlin, who has always inhabited her characters, from when we saw her play Edith Ann and Ernestine years ago on Rowan and Martin's Laugh-In, to her film performances, she so brings this lady to life. It's, it's a beautiful performance. The, the sequence with Sam Elliott, maybe six, seven minutes at most, but they bring so much history to those characters. We have seen that set up in so many films where the old lovers meet, and you know there's history, but you can't really tell what the history ever was. They walk into that room, and you know they you know, know exactly what it's it, about. It's really rich. Two veteran so actors. It's, it's just great, and regardless of how Johnny Depp fares <laughs> as he goes gangster once again. And so we've got a big weekend after we we've a had a little weekend. bit of a lull over and, the last actually, month with films. And from now through the end of the year, we're yeah. going to pretty much every weekend have something big. And, and so Black Mass, the Johnny Depp uh, starring gangster drama about uh, Whitey Bulger is coming out tomorrow. Yeah, and there's a lot riding on this. You know, Johnny Depp is a, 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 bit a of fascinating a actor, but he did recently give us Dark Shadows. He gave us The Lone Ranger and... You know, that Mordecai, Hollywood. he also had Transcendence. You know, how many strikes do you get before you're called out of the game? And well, so he's still got a couple in the pipeline. He's got Pirates of the Caribbean seven, 41. Right, and, and then he's got Alice in, Alice in Wonderland again. Once so again, once again. You know, he, Johnny will be employed after this movie. When, when Johnny Depp focuses on the character he plays, he can be superb. When you look back at a, a visit he made to the gangster world, a few years ago called Public Enemies, when you look at Finding Neverland, even when you look at the first Pirates movie. Back to some of his early films, he's such a strong actor. But as sometimes happens, the Hollywood game takes over and they become right. more concerned with their bank ability than their ability, and it hasn't been a great period. So hopefully this movie will do it. Now, you liked Public Enemies a lot. I did. I, I, well, I like gangster movies. Yeah. I, I and so what are some of the key well, ingredients when you're cooking well, up a gangster? So gangster movies are really predictable. You're going to have guns. Yeah. Rarely do you have a bow and arrow gangster movie. You're going to have guns. And then those guns have to show a lot of guts. So you've got people who are putting it out there. And then now and then there has to be a character who brings a little bit of glory. So it's guns, Guts and Glory. I know that sounds like a rock band. Guns, Gluts and... It sounds like a Guns, 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 guns and, and Roses glory. CD name or something. But you, you got to have those elements. And, and the great gangster movies take those elements, twist them around just enough, but ultimately give us what we're looking for and what we go to gangster movies to, to see. And time and time again, you've seen kind of the same actors oh, yeah. relive these roles. Uh, Al Pacino, Robert De Niro, Joe Pesci. You go back Joe to the, the birth of the gangster movies in the 30s, and you had James Cagney 
and Edward G. Robinson. It was like every other week they were in a new gangster movie. And you look at those movies now, and they're all the same. You can't really tell the original Public Enemy from the, the, the new one. Dirty Angel or whatever those. And then you went into the 40s, and you had Humphrey Bogart, who always seemed to show up in a gangster movie. And then as the times progressed, the genre hasn't changed a lot. You still have bad guys who shoot good guys, and then other good guys who go chase bad guys, and ultimately there's going to be a big showdown. And, and there's going to be a lot of blood. And somebody's going to die. That's right. Right. That's right. It's pretty simple. And so on the top of your list, I believe, you've got uh, Godfather 1. Is that right? Yeah, the Godfather one, as uh, no, in so many different genres. Whether we were talking films about family, whether we were talking about yeah, we've we've touched on period. Godfather so many times. But it's when you look at the at the at the meat of mm -hmm. the underworld, it's about as good as it gets because we get such a sense of the family that can exist in that underworld and how, even though to others they can appear mean and those guns come out, they, they really do bring the best to each other. There's a lot of bonding there. There is a lot of bonding. I believe we've got a clip of The Godfather. Oh, that's great. Yeah, we can, we can go back, and this is why we have video now. We, it, it, this is it's a perfect an, it's an, it, You know, it's just an offer we can't refuse. All right. <laughs> well but uh, until that day, accept this justice as a well, gift on my daughter's wedding day. Grazie. <laughs> Getting into the the depths of his life, and we gradually learn, 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 learn. What's marvelous about The Godfather is that it doesn't reveal immediately just what a big shot this guy is. Right. We get a hint because it's a big wedding. We get a hint because they're these people, but we don't really realize what a big shot he is until this stream of people come in and ask for his forgiveness or ask for his favors. Right. So more more his favors than yeah, anything. That, that tells us that we're, we're, we're here in the big time. It must get pretty tiring to be on your, the day of your daughter's wedding and all these people are asking for handouts. And giving you money. I mean, it yeah. just has to, has to get old. So that, and, and, the, and the second Godfather isn't as high on this particular list, even though it's very high on other lists, for me at least, because it's less about the gangsters. Yeah, it's less it's gangster. more about the politics. And so I think it, There's it's... There's no um, Sonny Corleone yeah. getting shoot, sh shoot out at the... Uh, no, that toll scene's great. So, <laughs> what, scene. so my number two goes back to 1967, a watershed year in movies that we've talked about many times. Right. An ultimate gangster movie, Bonnie and Clyde, with Warren Beatty, who has made gangsters... A bit of his own territory over the years. Yeah, he's uh, Bugsy is another one, right. I believe, that's on your Bugsy, list. Bugsy, Dick Tracy, but Bonnie and Clyde. He, would you say he's on the Mount Rushmore with the Al Pacino, Pesci, and De Niro? Or who would you yeah, throw well, in there? Well, as Pesci the... would be in the trunk. So I'd, 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 <laughs> but, but, but Warren Beatty, that, that kind of stoic man of few words things, right. works really well with gangster movies because, you know, let's face it, the purpose isn't to recite a lot of dialogue. The purpose is to shoot some things up. Well, in the case of uh, if you're Quentin Tarantino, you want to do a lot of dialogue in your gangster movie. You know, I think that's one that kind of breaks the mold. It's not as much of uh, you know, good guys, bad guys shooting yeah. each other. It's more or less it, morally ambiguous. Well, when you, when you think about Pulp Fiction, which I think we both would agree is a great gangster movie. Oh, of course. It is about as much the things that they're all about when they aren't being gangsters as the things they're about when they are. Right. What would would have been great if you could have like the fantasy mashups of all time would have been Quentin Tarantino directing James Cagney and Edward G. Robinson. <laughs> now that would have been would be a lot really of fun. cool. And if you think about Edward G. Robinson and James Cagney talking about McDonald's in France, that might have been a really interesting twist Dynamic. upon a classic scene. I like what you just said, though, about seeing the gangsters in their normal life. Mm -hmm. um, and Tarantino really did this in, uh, at first in Reservoir Dogs, which I believe oh, we have the scene of that movie just as well. such a great And film. the opening scene with the coffee, oh. that's like, uh. you know, you don't see that, that a lot. No, and, and what Quentin Tarantino does that so much better than so many people do is he takes us someplace... He lets us think we're going to see one thing, and then he gives us something so totally different. He does U-turns better than anybody. And this is his first clip, uh, first opening clip of his first movie. And before he took himself sometimes too seriously. Oh, it's not the oh, opening clip. Not. 
and Mario. it's not there. But you know, sometimes <laughs> too, too many swear words in the opening clip. <laughs> sometimes movies are better remembered than seen. Uh, so you you move from Quentin Tarantino, and then you say, okay. Who's the other director who absolutely has owned the oh, genre? Uh, Martin Scorsese. It has to be Martin yeah. Scorsese. In fact, years ago when Martin Scorsese made a very different film for him, The Age of Innocence, and people were going... With Daniel Day-Lewis, right? You know, Martin... How? How did he... Did he, he read? People <laughs> couldn't quite believe that he would film an Edith Wharton uh, book. But you think about... You think about Goodfellas, certainly. Casino, Mean Streets. I, I'm, I'm actually, of, of those, I, I'm a huge Casino fan. Yeah, oh yeah, that's great. I, I've always felt that if Casino had come out first, it would be the movie that was talked about as opposed to Goodfellas having come oh, out really? first. Oh, really? And, and, and Casino coming out a few years later and seen by many people to be a little bit too similar. To me, that opening 35 or 40 minutes of Casino is Well, they've both just, got a Give Me Shelter in it, I'm pretty uh, sure. Just, <laughs> they both have plenty of Rolling Stones songs. They're in just them. fabulous. But the relationships in Casino and the relationship between Robert De Niro and Sharon Stone, right. kind of that whole trophy wife mall thing that was a big part of Gangster Oh, uh, Sharon Stone's never been better. Uh, never She's been phenomenal. Better. Never been better. But and I believe we've got a clip of Goodfellas to show oh, uh, the Goodfellas audience at home. Is, of Scorsese's masterpiece. It is. One it of his masterpieces. One of his, one of his. Yeah. I think that what he yeah. is able to do is he's able to get underneath the characters to where we really feel we get to know these people beyond the violent things they do. And certainly in Goodfellas, the way that he slams together these scenes of violence with the visits to the mother's kitchen and his, his ability to help us see the humanity at the same time he helps us see the the bad things that people can do. And that and that's why these are good. And that's one of the things about the genre is when you have people like Martin Scorsese or Quentin Tarantino who make it look so easy, then you have awful d gangster movies where they think it is that easy. There's a just a terrible film from the 60s called The St. Valentine's Day Massacre. With that's been remade a couple times, hasn't it? Or it, no? it should just be. It, 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 it's <laughs> awful. It, it, it's awful because it's like pointless gunfire. It, it makes no sense. All right. And we don't learn anything about these people. It, it's just absolutely terrible. And so you like you like the uh, gangster movie where you learn about yeah. the inner, inner workings of someone's well, life. I think, I, I think that like with any genre, the more that we get to know the relationships and the more that we get inside the characters – the more interesting they are. One of the films that is often overlooked in this discussion is is Sam Mendes Road Road to, to Perdition. Yeah, we were talking about that with, one earlier. With, with, with Tom Hanks in in one of the most complex performances that he has given, Paul Newman in just a career capping portrayal. And of Jude a Law is phenomenal in that as well. Jude Law, he's I great. Mean, it, Daniel Craig yeah. is such a strong film. It's very dark. That's one of the first like ever gangster movies I ever saw. Yeah, it, 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 it's very dark, and it doesn't have real natural distinctions between who's good and who's bad. Because sure. Tom Hanks, in is, fact, is, is bad, good and yeah, bad, and, right. and ultimately has to pay for the bad things that he has done. Sure. But then his whole effort to protect his son from the realities of his work and his life. It, it's, a, it's a heavy film. But it's so beautifully shot. And it has a music score. Some day when we talk about music <laughs> scores, it has a music score by Thomas Newman that is haunting in its use of instrumentation to illustrate mood. It's just haunting. So Also, okay, I would throw one out to you and see if you've seen All it right, or let's if you like it. it. Fritzy's Honor. I have not. Is that homework? Steve, <laughs> how, how have you not seen Fritzy's Honor? I don't know. How? I'll I'll How? watch it. I promise. I swear to you. You, you have next to watch time it. we have film discussion next you week. You have I'll, to watch I'll it. It's, it. It's Jack Nicholson, and <laughs> there and he is. I see him on the you, screen. You, you have to you have to see it. They they, they play hit men or hit woman and man who all of a sudden have to go after each other. It's just a great. It's a great comedy with a really sharp. You don't edge. see the gangster comedy very often. No, but this one. This one is a gangster comedy because it's tragedy plus 10%. There you go. And it's great. It's great. So what do you think of Dick I, uh, Tracy? <laughs> You're on Dick Tracy already? What do you, what do you, think, of, what do you think of Dick I Tracy? I think it's one of the better ones for sure. Yeah. Absolutely. 
I prefer uh, one I had on my list is City of God. Oh, I love that. City that of one's, God. I think, There's, in terms of getting into seeing who the character is. Yeah, and it's a fascinating look at the choices that people make. Right. And, and you, you know, one that came to mind, and it's not really a gangster movie at all, but it's so much in the tone of these kinds of films. Two actually came to mind, L.A. Confidential, because it does... Oh, my God, I completely paint. forgot about it, L.A. But, Confidential. But, you know, if you're really thinking about a gangster movie, it's not necessarily... Sure. But it has it's the more shades cops of than the criminals. underworld. Yeah. But the one that came to mind that isn't a gangster movie, but it's so in the in the family of these kinds of characters, it's No Country for Old Men. Oh, yeah. Because... And the, Fargo. The Coen brothers are oh, all over. Oh, they oh, love the oh, gangster oh. underworld. Fargo, I think, I Miller's think Crossing. Tri- I think we need to do a tribute to the Coen brothers. Let's well, they've got one coming up in February. They've got a new film about Hollywood, I believe. I know. I know. Let's hope. Yeah. Let, let's hope. So one, one, one more. One more. One more. Warren Beatty. And it's a film that was nominated for quite a few Oscars, didn't win any. Bugsy. Bugsy, yeah. And what is great about Bugsy is it... it takes a very familiar story of the underworld guy who becomes the king and then his downfall. Again, a very familiar story. We've but seen it time and again with Scarface, which we haven't mentioned, by the way, in this oh. entire segment. Well, I'm impressed. I think Bugs- we've got a clip of Scarface. And Bugsy is a better version of the same story. <laughs> yeah, but look at Bugsy. I mean, you, you look at what's inside his his thinking and you can just tell that he's it, it somewhat at odds with himself and should he be the good guy that he is in one part of his life or kind of the trashy guy and of course it's a great story because it's when a lot Benning of uh, and Warren Beatty met I know we've got the three G's or, which are key ingredients but I feel like one of the other key ingredients is paranoia I feel like all mm, these all these gangsters very are very very paranoid yeah. and you see that with Tony uh, Montana and Scarface yeah, and you think... You want a flare gas? Okay. Have a night with you. Come on. Okay. Do you want to play rough? Okay. Oh, no. Say hello to my little friend! Okay. And you know, he takes the sport of it, but you know there's so much more behind it because, again, that's a character film, and it's a very complex film. And ultimately, very interesting. I don't think it's aged as well as some of the others. You know, people always complain about it, but I still love it. Yeah. I, I just think it's don't great. Think it's aged. I think it, it now feels a little cheesy. Yeah. Whereas a Brian, De, Brian De Palma has done better, well. better ones. Oh, I would say on the Untouchables. The untouchables. Yeah. yeah, the Untouchables. That would be a good one. Yeah. Uh, you know, the Untouchables, of course, uh, people of my generation, as long ago as that was remember the television show of The Untouchables. And so when it was made into a movie, one of the first of those old TV shows to become a movie, we went expecting Robert Stack to take on the bad guys. And Kevin Costner was a little mild-mannered at first. Right. And you weren't quite sure if that was going to work. Of course, it is worth everything for the performance of Sean Connery. Academy Award-winning performance. And that great scene in the train yeah. station. Yeah, that's one of my favorite scenes of all time. But you know... It, What's so much fun about gangster movies, and, and what's good is we don't see them all that often. So it's been a few years since we've had a good one. Well, and, The Departed and, was the last big yeah, successful one. It won Best Picture in 2006. And, and it, it, it was such, it, it had so much going on. It's the most rambling winner of a, of a Best Picture award I think I can remember. But it, it wasn't a tight film that, that it, it had a lot of stories going on. And I think we've got a, a scene of that, and it's, Leonardo it's DiCaprio with Jack Nicholson. Yeah, you, you just kept with that movie, wanting them to pick one, pick right. one plot, and just go with that. It had so many, but but when you think of the classic gangster films that recreate a period, one, one thing when we think of gangster movies, we do like to go back to a period in time, and we love the period detail. Right. We the Untouchables is the best uh, example, and, I think, and of that. Public Enemies. Was right. L.A. Confidential. Is a, and, and, yeah. And so we love that. There's a, there's a bit of a romantic fantasy about those old days when people just took the guns and did the, did the bit. So an odd choice for this collection of gangster movies that you may not have thought of. The gangster is a character throughout the film, but it's a comedy with Jack Lemmon and Tony Curtis. I don't think I've seen this one. Some Like It Hot. Oh, okay. <laughs> I hope you've seen it. I was going to say... I gonna, thought you were going in a different direction with that. We're going to take away your movie fan. <laughs> sorry, sorry. But, no, if, it, it begins with what is 
supposed to be the St. Valentine's right. Day Massacre. Okay. And then they supposedly witness the St. Valentine's Day Massacre, and then they end up joining a girls' band to get away yeah. from the from the gangsters. From the but gangsters. the gangsters do come back and scare them a lot. A gangster named Spats. So we've gone through the whole wide the whole spectrum. Last... I believe we've got one more clip, and that's the trailer for Black Mass that's yeah, coming out this weekend. Good. It looks good. But we can only hope. Hey, buddy. I need you to listen very carefully to what I'm saying because there are lessons again and again throughout your whole life. And you gotta learn from these things, right? It's not what you do. It's when and where you do it. And who you do it to or with. If nobody sees it, didn't happen. Jimmy, he's six. You really think that's the best thing to be telling your kid? Yeah. Still smelling like 10 keys. You can stop me if you try. Cause the devil is a lie. The devil is a lie. Don't come to the truth. The devil is a lie. The devil is a lie. Don't come to the The devil is a lie. Jimmy, when did you get out of Alcatraz? Oh, uh, that's nearly 10 years ago. Well, it's Wonderful to have you back in the neighborhood, son. So we return to the Boston wow. underworld what? with Black Mass this weekend. Lots to be excited about. You think about cities that have been in gangster movies. What would we be doing here without Boston? It's a great question. Notice there aren't a lot of gangster movies set in Little Rock. No. You just don't see them. True story, though. I've been to Little Rock, and Al Capone used to hang out there all the time. See? And, and Bonnie and Clyde Yeah, he used to have a hotel room there. Because uh, Little Rock used to be the Vegas of... Of Little Rock. Of Little Rock, yeah, before <laughs> Vegas was a thing. Because yeah. there's... Uh, actually, you no, know, I'm not... It's Hot Springs. It's Hot Springs, Hot not Springs, Little Rock. Yeah. Sorry, wrong part of Arkansas. Well, but it, it's I'm still, jumping the gun. But, but you're close. They're, yeah, I've been in both. You're but, yeah. close. Yeah. Hot Springs is really interesting. They've got a yeah, lot of gangster they, stuff there. Yeah, yeah. If anyone wants a little detour and, to gangster... But uh, you think about Boston, and you look at that trailer, and you know that neighborhood in Boston. Right, right. Because that's been the neighborhood that have, has been used so many times. And... You, you hope it's this good to be back good. again, though. It's you good to be back movie. in Boston. Yeah, you hope the movie's good. Yeah, I'd like to, to see Johnny Depp knock one out of the park. Well, this is the beginning of uh, basically a, a yeah. sprint. We're not going to really is. take a weekend off. We it got is. B- g- big movie premiere after big movie premiere from here until Christmas, yeah. and this is the first one, Black Mass, starring yeah. Johnny Depp this weekend. And then also getting limited release that opens this weekend at the Jacob Burns Center is Richard Gere's Time Out of Mind. Okay. Played last year at the New York Film Festival. It's a fascinating study of, of a homeless man in New York City who gets lost in the system. And contrasting to all this talk about fantasy and gangsters, it's a story of real-life horror that is quite close and quite important to pay attention to. So there you go, a recommendation as yeah. well as the big the big studio picture yeah. that's coming out. Mark, as always, hey, thanks for thank coming you in. and thanks for all this Yeah, look at these big lights, the big video. Yeah. This is a whole new show. Yes, it is. It is. Okay. And we'll be back after our break with our next guest, John Reed of hey. Fairfield Theater Company. We're going to be talking about their new venue, The Warehouse. When you experience a sports injury, you want to get better and fast. Coastal Ortho Express gives you direct access to orthopedic care quickly. Their physicians are fellowship trained in sports medicine at world-class universities and are also team doctors for area football teams. For specialized personal care of sports injuries, go to Coastal Ortho Express. Open Monday through Saturday in the iPark building, 761 Main Avenue in Norwalk or CoastalOrthoExpress.com. Coastal Orthopedics, keeping you on the move. While the temperatures are Cooling down, the fall bite is heating up. Albies, Bonita, Blackfish, Alligator Blues, and Stripers are following the large schools of bait that are abundant in the Long Island Sound. 
If you love the New England coast during autumn, this is the time to be on the water. The latest from Shimano, Quantum, Avet, Hoagie, Phase 2 and more are in stock and ready to go at the dock shop. And don't mind those fall breezes with jackets, hats, gloves, and fleece from Grundens and Stormer. The dock shop will keep you warm and dry. Boater, beach bum, fisherman, or simply love the New England coast, this is a unique place to shop. The dock shop, now in two locations, 51 Tokenique Road, Darien, 609 Riverside Avenue, Westport, or on the web, dockshop.com. Does buying a car leave you feeling like you're chasing your tail? Head straight to Pamby Chrysler Jeep Dodge and Ram and take car buying in a whole new direction. back with John Reed, the Artistic Director of Fairfield Theatre Company. How you doing, John? I'm doing pretty good. How about you? I see you guys have new digs here. Yeah, you are our first guest in the new video format of Arts and Leisure. I feel pretty excited yeah, about that. Yeah, and this is a, a very exciting day for you, I'm sure, after uh, a year or two of planning. The warehouse has finally opened at Fairfield Theatre Company. At least, really. The first plans I found were drawn in 2002. Oh, my goodness. Venues. I, so wow. I dug those up <laughs> about three and a half years ago and thought, okay, there you that go. seems like a great idea. Another venue right in the heart of downtown Fairfield. And so for people that uh, don't know about the venue, what is it, what's new about it? What, can, what is it offering people? I think it's 560 people or 640 capacity. 640. Yeah. Uh, so a little background. Uh, Fairfield Theater Company, uh, which is in the heart of downtown Fairfield, as I say. Um, right there at the train station. Right by the train yep. station. We have a 225-seat venue. We do about 200-plus shows a year in that. So oh, it's great. I went to see one last summer. It's, well, who'd you go see? Um, Moon Alice. Oh, yeah. Yeah, they were great. They're great. Yeah, yeah they were a lot there. of fun. I was there for that. And it's so cool. It's like right, <clears> in, the, they're like right in the center of the stage. It's well, it is such yeah. a small venue. You know, you're, you're a stone's throw from your favorite exactly. artist, which is fun. And, and uh, we also do shows at the Klein Auditorium in Bridgeport, mm-hmm. which is a 1,450-seat venue, um, and the Norwalk Concert Hall, which is 1,000 seats. But in between all of that, there was a huge gap, and so we took an existing warehouse that was part of the property and really retrofitted that to become a new venue. And the venue, 640 seats, as you say. By the way, tonight's our first show. Rusted, Rusted Root is Rude. coming into town, yeah. Sorry, yeah. I didn't lead with that, I, but well, there's a okay. lot of excitement okay. going on here. And, and the artists are already there. They're sound checking now, setting awesome. up now. So you're going to zoom right back down and... <clears throat> We got our certificate of occupancy yesterday. Oh, <laughs> so, uh, right in the nick of time. I've sweat a few bullets here. <laughs> <laughs> I can't say I screamed at people, but I may have gotten a little excited. Yeah. And uh, so we're, we're thrilled. We, we've got about 20 shows already booked for the venue. Oh, wow. You think about that. I mean, for, for uh, an agent, a manager, an artist to say, yeah, I'll play in your venue that doesn't exist. You mm-hmm. know, but, um, so there's a lot, yeah, there's a lot of love in the industry. We, we get a lot of respect in the music business and just really, really thrilled to be able to Bring to Fairfield, you know, tonight we'll have 640 people. We're sold out. Yeah, it's out. fully sold out show fully for Rusted Root. Right. And how did you get Rusted Root to agree? Did you just reach out to their agent? Or? Yeah, we have relationships with the agents. Sure. And, uh, we, you know, we had to kind of lie a little bit about, no. <laughs> I mean, you, know, you couldn't had, ask for a better opening act for the new oh, venue. They're perfect. It's, yeah, it's they're awesome. Perfect. They're perfect. And we'll have some sort of grand opening in a couple of months. This is what I call a soft opening. We sure. want to do a few shows, see how they play. Um, iron out any kinks i'm sure you guys no kinks here i mean the production this thing's perfect <laughs> <laughs> so i feel actually very comfortable because i go wow this is looks kind of like what our place looks like right now and what's your favorite aspect of the warehouse you know it looks like a warehouse mm-hmm. uh it's a mid-century modern you know 1940s construction we kept that it feels like a warehouse but it sounds like a really world-class uh music venue so uh, a third of our project budget was focused on sound systems and lighting systems so it's gonna it's got a really nice urban feel you know the, i was just talking to the one of the steel guys you know out of bridgeport he said this is new york this is new york <laughs> city but better 
in the San That's Francisco. how it felt when I went to a concert there. It was almost like you were in a New York City kind of like urban feel, yeah, nightclub right. type thing, yeah. And a lot of that, I mean, it's it's not entirely accidental. Meaning that when you live a little further out, you know, Fairfield's a great little town. I lived there myself, but the you know, it, it's not quite exactly New York, and yeah. so having the same artist, kind of world class artist, in a venue that's got that look and feel. Also configurable, so we'll have some shows that are fully seated, some shows no seats at all. And yeah, I saw that on the website. There's flexible flexibility with the seating. Right. Yeah. And we can also do, uh, like, private events, things like that, receptions, community events. We help other nonprofits do fundraisers. Uh, it's a great space for doing that. Cool. And I know Stage 1 has an art gallery that you walk into. Is that, I thought that right. was really cool. Is there going to be an art gallery with this as well? Well, the art gallery is really part of the whole complex. Oh, okay. So, and, and that's uh, curated by Art Place, which is a co-op of Fairfield County artists, you know, who are all local. Right. And they do a, they mount a new show every month, which is cool because oh, they, yeah, they, so their awesome. art gets seen. We probably had last year 40,000 people come to the door, so the artists get exposure to yeah, the Yeah, it's great exposure. People. It's also a great way to spend kind of the pre- Concert. The pre-show. Yeah, the right, pre-show. Right. And normally you're just kind of sitting around, but that way you get no, to look at some cool see, art. See the art, yeah. uh, go to the bar, have a cocktail. Exactly. And, uh, sit around. The, the warehouse also has a mezzanine on two sides, so you can kind of get a bird's eye view. A little bit like, I don't know if you know Bowery Ballroom, for example. Okay. Um, it's got a mezzanine. The, you look down over the floor, it's a raised stage with a flat, fo- flat floor. And on, you know, on a, a show like tonight, where we won't have that many seats in the place, you'll be able to walk right up to the stage, which the artists like, or most of them. You know. Some of them <laughs> will barricade. It really depends on the audience. But right. the, the audience feels like they're right in the middle of that experience. That's so cool. And I know you guys, re- you had a lot of donations that came in to make this a reality, Well, right? really. I mean, How it's important a, of a role were the community donors? No, a huge part of it. I mean, really, I mean, we're a nonprofit organization. So uh, I'm going to say about uh, 75% of the funding was through donations. Oh, wow. And then people can still donate? or Absolutely. And yeah. that's at yeah. Uh, yeah, Fairfield Theater Company? FairfieldTheater.org. .org. Right. You backslash. go there, you'll click, a, you'll click it. You know, you'll click on a little thing that says the warehouse, and you'll see a little video. Right. Uh, we did a crowdsourcing piece. Um, we've had, oh, I'm going to say 700-plus people have given to the project. Wow. So far. That's a truly Donations amazing. from, you know, a few dollars, greatly appreciated, to $50,000 or more, also greatly appreciated. There you go. And you said 2002 is when it you first well, grew up the first, in Well, the first, this was before my time. I've been there for right. three and a half years. But so I, I can't take credit for saying, let's build a venue in a warehouse. I can take credit for saying, okay, let's get it built, yeah. <laughs> you know, a few years later. And then were there any times where you're just like, this isn't going to happen, that you were worrying about its actual existence? You, or? If you spend time with me, you'll hear me say failure is not an option. So <laughs> there if there go. were times like I that, like I that. wasn't going to cop to the, <laughs> to the idea that it wasn't going to get built. Yeah, failure is not an option. We're only going forward. I mean, you think about it, we had shows booked, and like tonight's show, had we not gotten our, right. our CO yesterday, you know, I'm going to send 650 people somewhere else. You know? Right. So, so uh, you know, really, I mean, we, uh, I liken it to an old-fashioned barn raising, if you know what that is. So in olden times in the in the rural communities, the neighbor needed a new barn, all the neighbors came, and they spent a few days, and they threw the barn up. I think it's like that with the community. The communities come, either making donations, people volunteering to do the work. Our general contractor, uh, Ryan from Coastal Construction, did all that pro bono. My, oh, wow, you know, that's my, amazing. You know, uh, one of our board members, Jamie, who's, uh, who owns a uh, Security Solutions, donated his time. The three of us kind of shared the day-to-day construction part of it. People uh, donating materials, donating labor, donating time. You know, it's just uh, extraordinary to see so many people because it's such a love for the organization. Obviously, live music is is an attraction, but it, it really uh, very humbling, exciting to see so many. Yeah, people it is humbling. Out. I'm sure to have so many people come out. Yeah. And then the the grand final product is this great venue where people it's can come and see venue. live I, music. And I, I believe we've got a clip of, of uh, uh, some of the light test or yeah, something like yeah. that. Where's let me.
yeah. at speed, yeah. Yeah, getting yeah, ready for to the get night. the show tonight, yeah. So what are you looking forward to most? Uh, you know, now it's here, the big premieres Well, here. it's all about the music in mm. the community, uh, the ability to do more, being able to use Stage 1, for example, which we'll keep doing. Um, you know, we will probably, between the two venues, do 250-plus shows a year. So you awesome. think about that five nights a week. Yeah. Uh, the ability to bring artists in that were too large for stage one, too small for the other venues, artists that we you know that we really wanted to have, uh, and and being able to offer an exciting space right in you know as I say right in Fairfield County and Fairfield, it's a great stopover for artists who are touring from New York to Boston and beyond. Sometimes maybe they'll have a Wednesday night. We'll bring them out to our small. Yeah, venues. that's when I went to see Moon Alice. It was on a Wednesday. They had just right. run two shows in New York, and they were going to Boston. So exactly. it's a nice. I mean, uh, one of the first shows I saw at FTC, John Mayall, the the uh, really seminal to the whole uh, blues movement in the U.S. The John Mayall Blues Breakers, and he was there uh, there at our 225 seat venue. He walked out. I said, "This is like playing in my living room." I won't use his uh, give his British accent, <laughs> but he went on to uh, Lincoln Center to do three sold out nights from from stage one so you think about the, the juxtaposition yeah. of being able to hear and see John Mayall who by the way the only band leader who had both Jimi Hendrix and Eric Clapton as, as guitar players in his band it was pretty extraordinary back in the day but to see him in this kind of like your living room now I turn around and say it's like having John Mayall in my living room where I get <laughs> that space and so so that you know that that intimacy that uh, excitement and for people just to be able to something about music you can recall where you were when you heard that song at that moment, you can think, you feel the emotion of that. Oh, definitely. And being able to just bring more of that. I mean, it's, it's you know, we started the campaign by saying, uh, you know, I keep asking people what they want. They say more, more music, more theater, more art, more culture, more FTC. So that's that's what this has been, has been really, uh, we've been getting, on a mission to do more. Getting people what they want. To do more, exactly. <laughs> they asked and now they <laughs> will receive. You asked for it, now you get it. Exactly. <laughs> and besides Rusted Root, any... Uh, acts to announce? Oh, a ton of them. We've got, uh, I've got a cheat sheet, but I'll try uh, Southside Johnny and the Asbury Juice. Oh, wow. That's coming. Uh, Blue Oyster Cult. I, I, I don't know how many horror punk fans you have that are watching, but we had the Misfits coming. Oh, and, awesome. And the next night, followed by Buster Poindexter in stage one. Uh, the Revivalist, fantastic band, if you haven't heard them. Galactic, not announced yet, but you heard it first. <laughs> um, uh, we got the the weight, uh, the original members of the band, uh, ALO, Animal Liberation Orchestra. Uh, it goes on, and the, the list goes on. So you on. guys are loaded up. Yeah, you are ready we're, to rock. We're this fall. ready to rock. As I say, I, I've been kind of the most amazing part of the story to me is that uh, you think about an agent who is telling the manager or the artist that I want to put you in a venue that's never been played before, and I'm going to commit you to be there, <laughs> and 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 they're telling us it's going to get built. Now, how many construction projects actually? get done on time so, right right so that, going back to the scurrying around on the time-lapse photography that's that's kind of what we've been doing well john thank you so much for coming in it's no, the warehouse pleasure. at fairfield theater company it opens tonight with rusted root i believe we've got some rusted root to send us on our way out oh good those uh, guys sound great I, i'm not going to say come on down because we're really really <laughs> full, sold out but next you, show next else, show yeah go out to go on our website fairfieldtheater.org and the box office 203-259-1036 exactly all exactly. right come see a show perfect and we'll have some rusted root to send us home congratulations on the new video format oh know thank you this is new beginnings for ftc and for you guys yeah <laughs> Oh, my way. 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 O